Hey everyone, it's me again, Tasha Keeney. I'm an analyst at ARC and I cover autonomous technology that flies and rolls and 3D printing. And I'm also joined by my colleague, Sam. Thanks, Tasha. I'm Sam Kors. I'm also an analyst at ARC and I focus on energy storage, robotics and aerospace. And Tasha's gonna take it away and we're gonna talk some robotics and 3D printing. Thanks, Sam. So this is this is our big idea, uh, 3D printing and robotics. Um, you can think of this as two forms of audit automated manufacturing. And, you know, ultimately, we think uh, over the past year or two, we've seen um, a couple events, uh, the, the supply chain uh, crisis, um, labor shortages that we think will accelerate the adoption of these technologies. But we'll talk today about why they're disruptive. Um, our top line forecast. So we think that um, the enterprise value attributable um, to both 3D printing and robotics could grow at over 50% um, annual compound growth rate, uh, reaching over 6 trillion in, in 2030 from a, a very nascent base today. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, so over, over the past year, um, you can see here on the, the chart on the left, um, we saw during the supply chain crisis, of course, uh, delivery times were very extended. Um, and one great thing about 3D printing and robotics is that it can offer you a lot of flexibility as a manufacturer. Um, so you can think that you could smooth out um, these little shocks to the system or perhaps large shocks to the system uh, that we see from external events. Uh, so you can, you know, with 3D printing, for instance, get closer to just-in-time manufacturing. Uh, a good example of this is 3D printing is very good at something called bridge manufacturing. So say you are, um, you're, you normally get your parts from a particular supplier and for whatever reason they're out of commission. Uh, but you need those parts now. So uh, you can 3D print them in the interim. Um, you can often 3D print parts in a matter of hours versus, you know, waiting days to receive them from another supplier. Um, and of course, when your supplier comes back online, you might go back to a traditional manufacturing method or during that time, you know, you got a, a chance to experiment with 3D printing and you actually might use it going forward um, for, for the end use parts. And then looking at the chart on, on the right here, of course, we saw a large spike in U.S. manufacturing job openings as well over the past year or two. Um, when you think about any, any form of automation, um, so in this case, robotics, uh, these are technologies that really allow you to amplify your workforce. So you can think that, um, you know, you might be less affected uh, by uh, a, a shock to the labor system. And um, really robots just make each one of your employees a lot more efficient, which Sam will talk more about. And to Tasha's point, it's not just that these crises could accelerate adoption. It's that if we look historically, they actually have accelerated adoption. And what's the reason for this? If you're in manufacturing, uh, you really don't wanna shut down a production line if everything's going well. If everything's going well, you just let it run. Uh, but then all of a sudden there's a disruption and you need to find a cheaper, faster, better way of doing things. And that's really when robotics comes into play. And so if you look at the chart here, you can see that uh, the growth rate of industrial robots accelerated after the dot-com bust in 2002. That's that first red triangle there on the left. Uh, then it accelerated again after the 0809 crisis. Uh, and then you can see most recently in 2019, we have the China-US trade conflict and then the supply chain bottlenecks during 2020 and 2021. And so ARC expects that uh, these industrial robots are gonna continue to accelerate as you know people are looking back to what Tasha was saying to fill those open jobs uh, and make their existing workforce more productive. One of the other interesting things you'll see on this chart is that uh, actually we're looking at a cost decline here of industrial robots. And what we've seen is that the rights law curve for industrial robots is uh, quite significant. So that means that for every cumulative doubling of production of industrial robots, we're getting close to a 50% cost decline. And that's gonna continue to drive adoption as well. And now back to Tasha to talk about some of the benefits of 3D printing. Thanks, Sam. So to touch a little bit more on this idea of flexibility that 3D printing enables, 
Well, 3D printing is a form of additive manufacturing as opposed to subtractive manufacturing. Uh, you build parts layer by layer and um, you can 3D print in you know, single batch runs or small batch runs cost effectively as opposed to traditional manufacturing where you may have to produce um, quite a large number of parts just to do a, a, a single run or a single pass through um, if, if you're getting your machinery and, and tooling up and running. So 3D printing allows for um, what's called digital inventory. So you can picture that you have, um, you know, a file stored in the cloud with the, the design for the item that you're making and the instructions to print it. And then you may have, um, you know, facilities all over the world, uh, a distributed footprint um, where you have 3D printers closer to, um, say, the, the end location for where the parts are going. And you can print your files on demand. So you have one central location, you can print it, um, you know, exactly the same way in, in each different location. And um, so it can allow you to basically move away from storing a physical inventory of parts and, and move towards this digital inventory. And you can think that in your uh, warehouse, your factory, all you really need to keep on hand is the raw material for part production. Uh, so that could result in uh, the opportunity to shrink your, um, you know, your physical footprint or your warehouse footprint. Um, and ultimately, you know, 3D printing is a, a great cost reduction lever. lever. Um, you can, we've seen examples where uh, companies can, um, you know, in-house 3D printing and, and save time um, and cost to produce the part as opposed to traditional manufacturing, um, which we'll get more into a bit later. And I'll pass it back to Sam. Thanks, Tasha. And one of the big things we get, anytime we mention automation, whether it's in manufacturing or food services, uh, everyone says, you know, what happens to jobs? Are these robots going to steal our jobs? And, you know, what our research shows is that, no, in fact, automation helps create a lot of new jobs by creating uh, new services, new opportunities, boosting productivity, uh, and often leading to companies hiring more people. And, you know, a really good case study for this is Amazon. And so what we're looking at here is Amazon's deployment of robots and its employees at the start of the year. And Amazon really rang the bell for logistics robots back in 2012 when it acquired a company called Kiva Robotics. Uh, and you can see that, you know, it deployed its first 200,000 robots in seven years and then another 150,000 in just two years. So increasing adoption of robotics. Uh, but during those same nine years, Amazon's workforce grew 15-fold. So this is not a case of robots stealing jobs. This is a case of Amazon utilizing these robots, rolling out more warehouses so that they can economically offer shorter delivery windows uh, and just continuing to hire more and more people. And we think that will be the case uh, as more and more companies integrate automation into their workforce. Back to Tasha to talk about some of the uh, massive improvements 3D printing offers. Thanks, Sam. So if, if you think about the points that we're making, it's that, you know, not only are 3D printing and robotics great technologies to use um, after you experience a, a crisis or, you know, you, ne you need to change um, manufacturing techniques for whatever reason, but, um, you know, they also have inherent benefits. Um, the technology itself as opposed to the traditional way to manufacture something. So uh, with 3D printing, um, we, we, we say that you can um, basically accelerate the pace of innovation. So what does that mean? Well, if you think of the early uh, the phase of developing a new part, you may go through many different uh, iterations of prototypes until you come to your final part design. 3D printing helps you um, cycle through and iterate very quickly because, again, uh, the time to manufacture a single part is greatly reduced uh, with additive manufacturing as opposed to traditional manufacturing from, you know, it might take a couple weeks to get a prototype back from suppliers uh, and it might only take an hour to print it. Um, so if you think of something like this massive change that we're seeing in the transportation industry, so this relates back to our other big ideas of electric and autonomous vehicles. Um, so if you look at the work that Sam's done on electric vehicles, we estimate that they could scale from about 5 million today to roughly 40 million 
in annual sales over the next five years. And as that transition happens, auto manufacturers are going to completely have to retool uh, their current manufacturing lines and really reinvent um, what they're doing today to, to adapt to the future. Um, because fundamentally, gas-powered cars and electric vehicles are different products. Um, so a, a technology like um, 3D printing and, and other forms of automation allows for rapid prototyping, um, elimination of tooling, uh, a reduction in the number of parts, which eliminates complexity within your manufacturing process, and faster time to market. A couple quick examples of, of how we, we see these benefits shining through. Um, so at its main plant in Germany, Volkswagen produced this A-pillar that you see here on the left. Um, they, they cut weight uh, dramatically over 70% for that single part. Uh, they reduced part count by about two thirds. And um, ultimately they, they increased um, you know, their commitment to 3D printing. They plan to produce about 100,000 3D printed parts per year in that facility by 2025. Dana um, has also used 3D printing. Uh, here you see a tool for axle manufacturing. Um, and in using and adapting 3D printing, they were actually able to increase uh, the speed in their manufacturing process by 10 times. And then lastly, Nissan um, in-housed a 3D printing process. And in doing so, they were able to reduce costs by about 200 times and wait times uh, for parts that they, again, would have gotten back from suppliers uh, by over seven times. Uh, so these are really, really dramatic uh, reductions in, in time, cost, and complexity uh, that we get with this technology. And to talk a little bit about where we see the market going, uh, today a lot of 3D printing is in prototypes. Um, you know, we think a, a very large percentage of prototypes is already 3D printed, but that'll only increase in the future. Um, but really, the, the big opportunity, if you, if you think of our market forecast, is this end-use part opportunity. Um, so molds and tools, these are parts used in the manufacturing process. End-use parts are, you know, the final product. And uh, they're just roughly 1% penetrated today. That opportunity is about 1% penetrated. Uh, so it's really still early days for this technology. Uh, we see a lot of opportunity in, in markets like aerospace and healthcare in particular uh, for a, a technology like 3D printing because these are com complex, uh, low volume parts. And to wrap this all up, um, you know, again, if you look at the market for 3D printing and robotics today, uh, it's only about 70 billion in enterprise value. We expect that to scale to over 6 trillion over the next decade. Um, and this is, you know, again, driven by that end use part adoption and 3D printing. Um, and in the case of robotics, one, one thing I'll note here is that um, Sam's estimates for robotics don't include home don't include home-based ro robots. So you can think of these as manufacturing robots. There are many types of robotics applications out there. Today, we're just talking about um, manufacturing. And uh, you know, as companies uh, use these technologies um, during you know, supply chain shocks and labor shortages, uh, that, that's great because it allows for increased experimentation. Um, and ultimately, we think uh, you know, more future adoption. For, for ongoing manufacturing methods. For more research, head to arc-invest.com. Uh, follow Sam and I on Twitter. He is S Chorus Arc. I am Tasha Arc. Um, so look forward to, to more thoughts from us. Thank you.